I think the first things first, and what I wanted to get into is masculinity. Mm-hmm. And I believe that when we think about masculinity right now, there's a little bit of a toxic side of masculinity as far as when it comes to dating. Is when I'm starting to see a lot of people talking points, things like that. How can men shift the hyper focus of the toxic masculine side to have a more positive outlook on things when it comes to dating? Hmm, interesting. So you're saying that they're hearing they need to be toxic or they're hearing that they are toxic. So so which side do you want to dive into first? There's that there's a toxic there's a we can go We'll go both sides. There's more of the the toxic side. I feel like it's a hyper. It's that a that hyper, they are toxic. Dialogue, that men are toxic. Content creators, things like that. Is that what you're saying? Well, th- so the mm-hmm. thing is, is like I'm gonna, I guess, knock down my profession for a bit. But the point of content creators is to to be provocative, to be extreme, and for people to have an opinion, right, so that they stand out. So I wouldn't necessarily say to pay attention, or, uh, or let the screaming of content creators weigh heavy on your decisions about who it is that you want to be and don't take that as the representation of the world because as we all know really we're all in the middle and I don't think that there are a really large percentage of people who think that men are absolutely toxic and the worst those are just the louder voices that are out there and on the flip side i don't think that everybody thinks that men are completely beta simps and wimps again those are a small percentage of people um so i i my advice to people who are hearing this message is like it's just the loud people who are screaming these things from the rooftop not necessarily the everyday layman person and human being i don't know any women who think that men are absolutely toxic and if i have ever heard that from a woman it's most likely because she's pretty toxic too or she's been really badly burned and hasn't learned how to process that information correctly and see potentially what her part is in that toxicity so i mean that's that's my response to that i i i work with so many men who have that fear right that they're afraid to be toxic and they're afraid to be disrespectful and they're afraid to be a creeper do something assault like to a woman but these are like really good men that i work with so most likely they wouldn't do any of that stuff but what it's scaring them away from is doing all the things that women love which is being kind and assertive and bold and clear and sexy like those things are totally welcomed by women and the nice thing is that the modern men man is really well rounded. We're not putting any pressure on men to hold back their emotions or be stoic or be strong anymore. Now we're saying like, you know, come over to the human side. <laughs> come release your emotions, come be vulnerable, come talk to us more. So I, like the truth is is that the majority of people are requesting that side of men to go out. But I know that's challenging for most men because they've been receiving either these loud and large talking points from individuals who are out there creating content or they're receiving it from a lot of men who are 20, 30, 40, 50 years old or who are still kind of living in the, I don't want to say dark ages, but it is the dark ages because that's not who men are today and it's not really what women are looking for and to be honest i don't think women were looking for that in the past either um but because of the different roles that we all had it was more acceptable um but yeah i think we're looking for a whole man now which is pretty spectacular and easy for any man to achieve no no you make a lot of good sense there's a lot to unpack i feel like would you say if con if social media wasn't there do you think that we'd have a different outlook to how oh, we're maybe. supposed to navigate in relationships from a man's point of view? I'm yeah? sure. Like, I, the, I don't know. That's actually a very hard question to answer. I think we have a lot more things to try to take in, right? So because we have so many messages and then we have messages that are served to us based on our interest, it becomes extremely confusing or actually not confusing at all because you keep seeing the same thing over and over again that's how you know the internet works it serves you up what you like um i don't know how to properly answer that question but i assume that social media is helping and i assume that social media is also hurting so i know that the more stimulus that you have the more rattled that your nervous system and body get so uh, it just depends on how you digest information and if you take it as the word of god right then you're kind of screwed every time but if you take it as an opinion and a suggestion and then you you can deconstruct it for yourself it can be pretty magical no i love that you say that so how did you get started 
in all this? Like, was it just something that was off a of whim? Was it just something totally that you just felt like you whim. woke up one day? Aha, I want to help men. Totally well, off that a whim that led, that led to, aha, uh-huh, I want to help men. So I was 23. I went to a singles mixer at a rabbi's house because I had just moved to Los Angeles, and that was the community that I knew to tap into. Uh, and I wanted to make friends. I wanted to meet people. I had actually met my now husband a week earlier, but I was like, let's just go window shop and see what's available. Uh, and I was with one of my girlfriends <laughs> who had gone through a breakup and was in need of getting out and interacting and she really wanted to date a Jewish guy so we went to this rabbi's house and I was not interested in anybody but I liked talking to the guys and I was like the only girl who was actually interacting with men because the room was split and it wasn't for religious reasons but there was guys over here and girls over there and nobody was pairing up and talking so I started talking to guys they're like why aren't you talking to these girls and they're like I don't know if she wants to be approached blah 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 blah. and I started giving them my advice and then I literally would grab them and pull them over to women start the conversation if it was going well I would walk away and at a certain point in the night somebody said oh you're a good wing girl I was like oh okay that's that's cool I don't know what that is but that's okay I love being a wing girl and by the end of the night people were pairing off and people were mingling and I was feeling pretty proud of myself and then I went home and I said to my roommate at like 1 30 in the morning I want to be a wing girl I I can do this I could do this professionally there's nothing like this out there and he's like no guys don't want this guys don't want help from women and I was like I don't think you're right I I'm different than most women I can help them and so I posted an ad on Craigslist the next morning I had over 85 guys who were like okay Tell me about this. What's going on? I want to I want a wing girl. I want you to come with me and pick up women for me. So I st- so I started and it was a, a live service at first where myself and another wing girl would go out with guys and we would pick up women for them. But I started to realize after a short period of time, like most of these guys just wanted to talk to me and pick my brain for two reasons. One, because they didn't have a lot of information about women and two, because they were freaking afraid to actually go and interact with women by themselves. And then I decided that I wanted to educate, coach, and motivate men to go do this on their own. So I would arm them with all the knowledge about how women work, what they want, what they don't want. And then I would give them the skill sets and the tools they need to actually go and interact with women successfully. And that's how I developed the wing girl method, which I've had for 17 years now where I you know, coach men on how to attract and get women. Legend. That's, the, oh, like, that's all I can say is a legend in the <laughs> space. You. you know what I mean? You know, a legend straight up because I feel like there's a, there's a certain amount of people that are in this space, if you want to call it the manosphere, the dating community, whatever, that have all come on a rise, I think, from the pandemic, right? And you've been still here in the Coliseum. And I feel like when we look at how these talking points are happening and developing and you look at your content, your content's so wholesome. And in a way, it's relatable because it's not coming from, there's no negative undertone to it, right? There's a lot of just relatable conversation. You Sometimes you watch it and you're like, that makes sense. You know Thank what I you. mean? Thank you. I hope that's it, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then when you look at it then and you say about you being a wing girl and then you go out places, you're out in the nightclubs, you're out at the patios, you're out at the bars, you're out at the restaurants. Do you think more women need a wing woman in their life to find those right people to find the right men to date absolutely but it has to be a good wing woman the truth is is like it's more challenging for women to have wing girls than it is for men to have wing girls like wing girls with men make men look good wing girls around other girls are competition if you have this bubbly charismatic Mm. flirty hot girl around you that's competition right very different but having a wing well actually that can kind of hurt you too <laughs> having my you you want to have like good girlfriends <laughs> around you of different styles and different types so that you're not really competing over the same guys but for women and for men i think it is essential to have friends who are the opposite so i'm just so gonna sound like a 40 year old right now gender sex i don't even know what the correct label is now but somebody who has an opposing view or the exact view of the people that you're trying to pair up with. I don't even know how to classify that, right? So for for me, if my girlfriends ever need advice about guys, I send them to my husband. I can motivate them. I can totally help them now. I have more insight on men based on what I do for a living. But I'm not a man. I have not played women, ghosted on women, really liked. I haven't experienced those things, so I don't know what the motivation is there for men or how it looks when it's played out. 
Therefore, I would advise my female friends to go to my husband. On the flip side, there's tons of wonderful things that men can learn from other men and having male mentors about how to interact with women and having guy friends around you to like motivate you and push you further. But there is about 5% of information that you can't get from other men that are essential to get from a, a female pers- perspective. Wow, I should hit my soundboard for that because you, yeah. <laughs> you just gave a whole bunch of gems there. And I feel like, you know, people don't, they don't really realize and things like that. And I see it in the talking groups. I see it in the friends groups. And it's like guys are doing some things that I'm like, you don't necessarily need to do that mm-hmm. to get her attention or to have a conversation. Just be just be original. Just be yourself. I always say that. Just be yourself. You don't got to have some fancy pickup line per se. Just have a conversation. I think what you said at the beginning, if we're more authentic in our communication with what we want i think you get the relatable responses that you want 100%. you know what i mean yeah but I, w- I will say this because i totally agree with that but i think the be yourself response is very infuriating for some guys because they are they're like i am being myself but they don't realize they're being the muted pleasing appeasing versions of themselves because they're too afraid to let the, their true selves out or because they don't really know who they are Right. And they haven't let that side of themselves out. So they're not really being themselves. They're being like the I'm perfect version or the I'm completely shy and uncomfortable around you version. So you're not really seeing the true me. And so a a lot of what I do, and I I do know that a lot of the male coaches do this as well, even those who were part of the pickup artist community a long time ago, like one of their first things that they do is tackle like what is self? Like who are you? What's the man that you want to be? Let's define him. Let's figure out who you are. Let's get your boundaries in place. Let's get your goals in place. Let's figure out your opinions and what you represent. And I think that when guys can figure out how to do that and get really clear on who they are, then they can be themselves. Because you can't really be yourself around a woman if you're afraid to state your opinion or if you don't even know what your opinion is. So that's why so many coaches do have that as the first portion of learning how to attract somebody into your life. It's about giving yourself that clarity so that you can achieve your goals. Well said. Well said. <laughs> so, betas, simps, mm-hmm. they don't have no goals. It seems like they just have a lot of just complaints. Just keep showering or <laughs> over qualification. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, I can't get no success. Why do you, why, why are there so many betas and simps out in this world? And is it just to equal the, the play with, or level the playing field? No, so it's, it's just easier to be mm. a beta and a simp, right? It's easier to complain about why you're not getting something, or it's easier to think everybody else has a problem than to actually identify that there is something going on with you. I think that's what happens for most guys. They think, and I'm not trying to be negative toward, towards people because I also used to be a simp. I also used to be a beta, right? For me, I was uncomfortable. I was insecure. I was shy. On the inside, I knew I was great, but I wasn't showing any of that to anybody. And I put others at fault for not trying to work hard to see that portion of me. And that became extremely frustrating uh, and made me angry and made me sad and made me insecure. And I, like, I understand their, their spiral. Um, but it wasn't until I started doing some serious work on myself. I've had my own coach. I had a stroke when I was 20 because of all of this pressure that I was putting onto myself. So like, I, I, I've, I've grown from that. And a, a huge portion of the work that I do now is, you know, selfishly for me <laughs> because I want to continue growing and learning how to tackle my insecurities or new insecurities that come up and I think people who are who are beta and who are simps are just, are just a little bit afraid of, to do the work or they've tried to do the work but don't understand that you're going to fail a lot before you succeed and possibly have given up so they get you know they, they stay in that zone or because they haven't really had good mentors and people around them to show them there are ways out of it and to motivate them to keep going never heard another woman say she was ever a beta or a simp so that right there that 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 shows that level of self-awareness you know what i mean and i feel like more people need to have that self-awareness when it comes to dating and being intentional you know what i mean because that's something that i face 
a lot of times, right? Where it's like, I'm very straight to the point. Like, listen, who are you? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Let's get through the fluff. And I can see where a lot of people are just kind of like, eh, I'm nervous. I can't do that. So for you to qualify that and say that that's what you were, I'm like, wow, because it now gives me a different perspective when you're thinking about dating in the community now. You know what I mean? Totally. Because it's like not everybody's not everybody's self-aware with their own things. They have their own preconceived notions. Totally. They've been hurt in the past and all this other stuff, right? Oh. So. Oh, for sure. And they have their Props own on experiences. You that. Oh, thank you. So I started watching. Do you watch the show Love is Blind? I've heard about it. I might. We'll see. <laughs> okay. So it, somebody convinced me to watch it. I'm like a huge fan of Bachelor in Paradise. I just like watching dynamics between people, like how they make decisions, men and women. I, cause it's, it's a part of what I do, right? So it fascinates me. And sometimes you don't get like the real information because it's edited a certain way. But so somebody told me to watch Love is Blind. It's really interesting because it starts off with these people who are in pods and they date, but they don't see each other. They just talk and communicate. And there was this one couple on the first episode that I saw last night. And they were, you know, on their third or fourth date. And the guy said, he's like, you know what? I haven't really been able to go deep with you. Are you open to that? And right away, she got nervous and closed off. And he can't see any of this, right? So she's just silent to him on the other end. And it just made her so uncomfortable because she probably didn't even know what that deep meant. Like, what does it mean to be deep, right? And for her, because... She didn't want to go deep because she didn't really know what it meant. That turned him off completely. And it had her thinking that she was just a, a shallow person, right? She went away with the insecurity that she was this shallow person. Cut to later on they meet in person. And it turns out that she's then in this relationship where she's going much deeper <laughs> in communication with her partner. So it turns out she, was, she actually was a little bit deep. I mean, my point is, is like... A lot of these words people are fearful of and they get scared and then they get closed off. And so this happens on every side for men and for women, depending on their experience and depending on what words they hear, depending on how they grew up. Um, you're always going to come up against like somebody's boundary. And it's about being the calm person who can breathe through these boundaries, understand somebody's going to have it, and then just talking calmly to the other person. So in this scenario, this guy didn't just say, like, oh, I, like, when I say deep, I just mean, like, I want to ask, I want you to ask me a few questions about myself, maybe my childhood, right? He literally just said, let's go deep. She said no, and then he kind of had a negative attitude towards her not wanting to go deep. And then on the flip side for her, she was angry at him because he wanted to go deep and she wasn't sure she wanted to go there yet. My, my point being that it, it, it could have been talked through and worked through uh, in that moment if somebody had the tools to do it. One of the people had the tools to do it. There's a lot to unpack there because I think it could also go into maybe she wasn't that interested in him, maybe. Potentially. You know what I mean? Potentially. And the reason why I s yeah. Yeah, the reason why I say that is because I feel like you know when a person's interested in you. So it's like, it's not like she's going to comply per se, but I think she's willing to give a little. You know what I mean? Not fully break, but oh, I'll bend. You know what I mean? He's appealing. We can talk. We can have a conversation. And I think that goes into even, it's so funny. I feel like we're in sync here because it's the same thing about like the whole phone number. Right. A girl give you her phone number, but she just gives it to you off the whim. Right. But it's like, is it just a collection of just database, yeah. more, more, more numbers for her? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she doesn't want to respond back via text. And it's just like, well, why do you do that? We know that it's because you're wanting that ego boost. You want that mm -hmm. self, you know, praise because you're probably used or to that. Or because it's easier. But if you do it with a guy like myself, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if you do it with a guy like myself, I'm like, I see that. I recognize it. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll send you a message. You don't respond back. That's on you, not on me. Mm -hmm. See, so why like do you think that. a lot of women do that still? Like, yeah, why because do a lot of women easier. still do that? Do you think it's, it's just because easier it... than saying yeah? no? I don't want to give you my phone number. I I can screen a call like nobody's business. I can also pretend I don't get your text until five days later. Like you don't see what I'm seeing on the other end, and I can make up whatever it is that I want. I'm not giving you my address and say come knock on my door. I'm just giving you access to my phone. Right? Telemarketers have access to my phone. It's not that big a deal. I can I can press delete or <laughs> no if I want to, or I can pretend I'm not seeing it. It's just easier. Listen, people are uncomfortable. 
do you know it's not it's not easy to say no to somebody's face it's really challenging especially when you're caught off guard and it's not out of fear of like being assaulted i know that, that that's like a portion of it as well in some areas with some people maybe you're nervous to say no for those reasons but really it's just like i don't want to hurt somebody and i don't want to cause an issue right now so why do we spare people's feelings then in dating? Why don't we just be open and honest? Because uh, it's so uncomfortable to do. It's uncomfortable. People avoid discomfort at every cost, you know. Some people are amazing at it. Some people can be very straight and clear. And that's what I hopefully help teach many men how to do and how to be. Uh, but the majority of people are uncomfortable. Uh, you know, I, I fall back into that place sometimes because it's just easier. Mm -hmm. So do you think that because it, it all plays into the ghosting aspect, is it because it's uncomfortable because people ghost because it can't be real? They can't be intentional. They can't just say, hey, listen, mm -hmm. I don't find you interesting. I don't find you appealing. So I'm going to ghost you. Yep. I mean, it's easier. Right? That's a harsh thing to say. It's easier. It's easier. <laughs> I feel like that should that's, be the label of the episode. I mean, seriously, yeah. it's just the, e it's the easy thing to do, right? Even though it actually is so much easier because the amount of stress and pressure that you feel every time that person contacts you is like more anxiety that you put onto yourself. It, easy, it is easier to say like, listen, like I think you're really cool. I'm just not feeling that chemistry that I wanted to with you. Um, but I wish you well. You know, have a good life. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. So, you know, th that is the easiest thing to do. Or, you know what? I don't really want to give. I'm not going to give out my phone number. I'm enjoying this conversation right now, but I don't see us, you know, I don't see myself wanting to connect after we finish this conversation. It, that is that is probably the easier thing to do, but people think it's the easier thing to it, avoid and ignore. Because that's a pretty bold thing to say to somebody. So how can women... <laughs> Before you get into this powerful content and this conversation, I need you all to do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button on the channel because that's the best way you're going to stay up to date with everything that's going on. Like, share, comment, review, and let me know what's going on, people. So when it comes to women in dating, how can they become more intentional women? into what it is they want versus, yes, versus not still playing off of the toxic dude that they met a couple months ago, still hanging on to their ex from five years ago mm -hmm. and things like that. What, what can they do to become better? They can just ask themselves really hard questions and really clear questions. It's not like, what do I want this guy to do or to look like? But it's how do I want to feel around this guy? And yes, you can have your, you know, I don't even want to say your superficial things, but you could have your select things that you need in a partner. Like your, your partner had better have their shit together, right? Make their own income, have their own job. If that is something that is essential for you, like absolutely list it, right? But then the, the, the bigger questions are about how do you want to feel around this person that you are with? I want to feel safe. I want to feel like I can be myself. Like, and, and those are things to start gauging when you start to date somebody like I want to feel happy I want to feel like a child uh, like so I really think that in this <laughs> love is blind show again I just started watching it but when you watch them when they're in these rooms and they actually can't see each other and they start describing some of these things that they really like about this person that are not about physical attributes at all right they can't even really ask like could they ask what they did for a living I forget if they could uh maybe they could but like they can't really ask that much about the individual except for like who they are as a person and, and take that as guidance and use that for when you date. Because I think those things are really, really important, especially when you're much younger. Like I met my husband when I was 23 and he was 33. I didn't know those things about myself. I just wanted to have fun. I liked the idea. I had a fun group of friends and a community around him. And I enjoyed being around him and I laughed, right? And a lot of things that I needed, either I didn't know at that time or has, they have shifted since then, which has posed challenges in my own relationship that we've had to work through, which is true for any relationship. Um, and luckily, we've navigated them well, <laughs> because now we've been together for 17, 18 years and have two children uh, and a successful marriage in most people's eyes. But had I asked myself those questions, I, I would have known myself better when I was younger. I would have represented myself differently in my relationship. And maybe I would have chose somebody different or maybe I would have chose the same partner. Um, but I, it, there would have been a lot more clarity between the two of us and then an 
like easier navigation for the two of us. So that's my advice to to women is just like really think about who and how you want to be around this person and then on the flip side, you know, w- what it is that they're going to be bringing around you that has you feeling those things. No, no. Well said. Congratulations. A successful Thanks. marriage because I feel like <laughs> Even when you, yeah, yeah, no, and I think you got to give flowers, you got to give credit where credit's due because you've been there, you've done that, you've experienced it. Yeah, and I think it leads, it leads, yeah, it leads to something you said about age, and I feel like age gap in dating is something that's not necessarily discussed enough. So, I feel like you get a lot of. There's some people that are opinionated about this. You should date somebody maybe two years younger, two years older. I feel like we're in this world now where dating has rules, but I feel like you can't control who you may be attracted to, right? I think younger women are attracted to men a little bit older because Mm -hmm. the guys in their generation are not men, per se. They're Mm -hmm. still growing up. They're still like teenage boys still running around, you know, in the football field and things like that. How How would you explain to the audience dating within the confines of age i would say don't put limitations on your dating pool so even last night and it, this relationship didn't work out on the show when i was watching love is blind this one woman who was 31 she fell for this guy who was 25 and she was like no 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 because no. like in the real world he wouldn't even be on her radar right she wouldn't have listed that in her category for her online dating app. So she wouldn't be served up somebody like him. But they clicked. And he was a great potential partner for her. So I, I, for guys that I work with, I always... It's say, tricky. It's it, tricky. I mean, it is there, It is tricky. But like most women who are 25 do not want to be with a 55-year-old. A 65-year-old, a 70... Let alone like a 45-year-old. They don't want to. It's not appealing to them. They don't want to. If they were presented with that option in person and like those people happen to connect, that is fantastic and it could be an option for them. But in their ideals of ideals, that's not what they're putting onto paper as something they want. It can potentially happen 100%, but it's not the norm. But that may be because of the limitations that we put onto ourselves or it's because, you know what, that those, those two generations just don't click very often. But... I don't want to put limitations on anybody. Like, I understand why a 55-year-old is attracted to younger women. Their boobs stay up. They're pretty. They're energetic and fun. And they encounter a lot of women who are older who are not so friendly and fun and energetic and lively and young. But if they did find different pools of women and were a little bit more selective, they could find that there's also a nice pool of women who are their age that could provide them with the same thing that they're looking for in a younger woman in terms of like high energy and fun and still wants to live life Uh, that was a long-winded answer for i don't really care about age i don't think there should be a limitation no and and that's the thing because i feel like i feel like some men do in a way but then i'm like okay you date somebody i'm 38 so you date somebody in their 30s where are they mentally at in their life and that's why i kind of play off of the whole thing it's like and I know what you're going to say, well, you're very opinionated here, but I feel like the older the woman is, you have to think about what she's been through and has she kind of escaped the issues and the, the, the how do I say this? Try not to get canceled here. <laughs> um, have they escaped like the, the negative connotations of bad relationships? Because you think when you get older, they say when you get older, you learn a lot more, right? versus somebody that may be five years to seven years younger that is, say, for instance, let's just say she's 28. Mm-hmm. That will be 10 years. And maybe she came out of a relationship earlier in her 20s. Now she's actually looking to settle down. You know what I mean? You kind of see where I'm going with that? I do see where you're going with that, but I do think it's all individual because you could have this one woman who keeps repeating the same bad mistakes over and over and over again and at 65 still dates like a 22-year-old right? She's still insecure, still dates guys that are no good for her, that are attractive and appealing, but treat her horrible. Like, there's there's so many patterns that exist out there. Or you could have a 27-year-old who's always known what they want, brilliant old soul, 
was very has been very career driven who's very good at communicating because in her family they really taught her i'm just saying like there are it's individuals i really think it's individuals and as an individual you have to decide what it is that you want to deal with if you're 38 and you meet this great 25 year old who you're like oh i connect with you i like how i feel around you i like being around you but you know what i want to have kids and you're not ready for kids for seven years like there's it's just it's, it, you just, it's just the individuals have to figure out what is best for them. But you can also say, I'm 38. I haven't met any woman like this woman. We click so well. We just really get each other. You know what? I'm a man. I can wait another five years to have kids. She's not ready for kids for five years. Let's just enjoy each other. Like my husband and I, uh, I didn't have kids till I was 33, and he was 43. So there's plenty of time. And I live in Los Angeles now, so it's like everybody's older who gets married. Um, so, again, <laughs> it's it's individual. I I don't, I see what you're saying. I totally understand it. Um, but you never know until you're in it. And that's why you, you can cast a wide net for what you're looking for. But I wouldn't look for an age number. I would look more specifically about like who that woman is and what her interests are and what your interests are. So true. So true. Well said. Before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. 1% better. I always ask every guest that comes on my show how to be 1% better Ooh, that's a good in question. whatever area of life. But I'm going to spin it to you because it's a dating episode. How can we become 1% better in our dating world? Oh, by doing exactly what we talked about on this show and it's being clear instead of ghosting, right? You can be one, you can actually be 10% better, but 1% is a is a good number too. If you don't ghost anymore and you just say to somebody, I am not interested. Or on the flip side, you say, I am interested. Just be very clear on what it is that you want and well express said. that to the other person. Yeah. Well said. Marnie, where can everybody check you out? Check out all your great content. Yeah. Like I said, legend in this space. And oh, thank uh, you. for the men that are listening to this that need to get that coaching, you know what I mean? By the wing girl herself. How can everybody check you out? Yeah, well, I would say go to winggirlmethod.com. Sign up for my newsletter there. And then I will tell you about all of the other places that you can get tons of free content, the programs that we have, the coaching that we have. But the first place to start is winggirlmethod.com. Sounds good. Yeah. And I do appreciate you for this. I appreciate you too. I want to have you on my, my podcast. I think that would be great. Uh-oh. Me on your podcast? Yeah, now I'm gonna ask oh, you. No, questions. It's a different beast. I'm kind of reserved. I'm reserved in the dating in the in my in my conversations here. You know, mm, I let okay. the experts do the work. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, wa I want to hear All about right. you. Okay, but thank you so much for having me. Okay. Yeah. No. Definitely.